So before we get into the actual crux of this video, the actual topic at hand, I just want to say my opinion on one quick thing uh, that's not related to the topic, and it's this. Kids, don't do drugs, don't do alcohol, don't smoke, uh, don't do all those bad things. And I mean, I can't control your life or anything like that. But if you do all those three things that I just mentioned, do it in a place where it's legal, do it in a state where it's legal, and unfortunately, one of those states that it's not legal in and where it should be in is Florida. I got to say, you know, <laughs> this certain thing that I'm going to be talking about, it should be legal pretty much in the whole United States. But unfortunately, some states are just behind the times, but it is what it is. So what I'm talking about is weed. Weed, ladies and gentlemen. And when it comes to wrestling, uh, well, a WWE superstar was arrested for possessing weed in their car. And that was one of my favorites, unfortunately, Liv Morgan. So Liv Morgan was arrested Thursday for possessing weed in her car. And the cops uh, was smelling the weed uh, while she was driving and kind of driving a little bit erratically. Uh, and the news was publicly revealed the next day. So a very unfortunate situation. Um, uh, I'm kind of disappointed in, in the news overall, but I just hope that Liv um, is doing all right and nothing bad will come out of the situation. And overall, I mean, yes, I mean, you can do whatever you want. Um, you can use weed um, and all that, but if it's illegal in the state of Florida, and I know it should be legal in pretty much in the entire United States, but if it's illegal there, you can't be doing it. You cannot be doing it. And yes, I'm still a live fan, but it, come on. You cannot be doing le uh, weed in a place where it's illegal. You just can't. And so I just hope that they don't punish her too bad. Uh, they don't they don't give her like a big ass fine or jail time and all that because I I've read that uh, weed uh, weed is a big no no in Florida. So those are just my thoughts, quick thoughts on that. Um, but that being said, um, hopefully Liv doesn't uh, fall into a big big trap uh, with what she did. So speaking of big traps, let's get into the topic at hand because a uh, big trap that the a certain team has to avoid is the San Francisco 49ers because um, one of these big traps that they have to avoid is the Arizona Cardinals because uh, for these next four weeks for my San Francisco 49ers, these final four weeks uh, that are to come are probably some of the biggest for San Francisco who pretty much now controlled their path of locking up the NFC's top seed in the playoffs. And yeah, that pretty much all begins with a visit to the desert as they take on the Arizona Cardinals in their second and final meeting of the regular season. So, for both of these teams, um, I mean, they're pretty much in opposite directions. The 49ers heading heading into the playoffs officially now. I'll talk more about that in a bit. And for the Arizona Cardinals, well, they're pretty much in a rebuilding phase. Um, they're 3-10, and 10 and, well, they're pretty much one loss away from officially being eliminated. I'm surprised that they're still in contention, but that just goes to show how weak the NFC is this year. But nonetheless, they're pretty much in a rebuilding situation pretty much evaluating who they can keep who they can delete for next year and so on and so forth so in contrast to when these two teams met last time around well back in week four like when we were a little bit a quarter away into the season the cardinals had a different qb under center that qb some of you may be familiar with him is josh dobbs Joshua Dobbs was the quarterback under center, filling in for Kyler Murray while he's still recovering from that torn ACL. Um, and, well, he kind of made things interesting for the 49ers in, in that game at Levi's uh, for pretty much three-fourths of the game. But for the 49ers, they managed to pretty much crumble uh, the Arizona Cardinals in the fourth quarter and pretty much put that game away 35-16. to So in terms of this past week for both of these teams, for my 49ers, they were in another divisional battle against the Seattle Seahawks, the second one in three weeks between both of those teams. And they were involved in a gritty and grindy battle, kind of like the one that we saw uh, several weeks, <laughs> two months ago against Arizona. And in another backup quarterback in Drew Locke, uh, filling in for Geno Smith. And yeah, it was a pretty much back and forth battle. Uh, both teams tried to uh, get up on under each other's skin, but... Brock Purdy's explosive patch to George Kittle at the top of the fourth quarter pretty much sealed the deal for uh, the 49ers, and a late interception by Fred Warner sealed the deal for uh, San Francisco 28-16. to 
Meanwhile, for the Arizona Cardinals, they were on their bye week, but the last time they were in action back in week 13, they put together an upset over the Pittsburgh Steelers behind uh, running back James Conner, who was pretty much coming back to face his old team. He put up two rushing touchdowns, and Kyler Murray found a new target as well in rookie tight end Trey McBride. So they had a productive day. They beat the brakes out of the pretty much <laughs> broken Steelers 24 to 10 in week 13. So yeah, they're pretty much fresh uh, coming into the final stretch of their season. So for the 49ers, yeah, you have to be careful with this team. Uh, so no more Joshua Dobbs. Kyler Murray is kind of almost back into form. He's pretty much moving around uh, as he usually is. So yeah, he might not have the supporting cast around him, but hey, it's still Kyler Murray that they have to be careful of. So for the 49ers, uh, as they try to make their way to the NFC's top seed, I mean, there's still a long ways to go and they still have plenty of games that they have to win. Yes, I know it's only four, but four can go a long way, um, especially if they do not win all four of them. So in terms of this past week, you know, the 49ers, they've elevated themselves into the NFC's top seed after they won last week and the Dallas Cowboys did their job. They absolutely crushed the Philadelphia Eagles um, on that Sunday night game later on that night. So it pretty much sets up this three-way tie uh, between the 49ers, the Cowboys, and the Eagles for the number one seed in the NFC. So the 49ers have the tiebreaker between both those teams because they beat up on the Cowboys, they beat up on the Eagles. But now they got to beat up on all these teams. I know it's not going to be easy considering what I'm going to talk about next, but they pretty much got to do their job. Hashtag do your job. So that's the message for the 49ers. Uh, the Niners, uh, though, they managed to get half a step closer towards um, that goal of uh, getting to the top seed because thanks to the New York Giants, the 49ers are in the playoffs. They beat the Giants, upset the Packers the next day on Monday Night Football. So the Niners got a playoff berth already, the first one to do it. So now going into this game, the 49ers pretty much have an opportunity to wrap up the division away from the LA Rams, who are still in contention for it, by the way. So the Niners have an opportunity to clinch the NFC West by taking care of the Rams, or by some chance, the Washington Commanders beat the LA Rams around that same time. So an opportunity exists for San Francisco that they cannot, uh, they cannot slide by. So in terms of the injury report for both of these teams, uh, the 49ers kind of coming in beat up. The most that they've been beat up, uh, I think, all season long. But mainly centers around the defensive side of the ball. So that kind of gives you an idea of the mindset of the 49ers going into this game. And so looking at the injury report for the 49ers, pretty much your defensive line is banged up. Half of your starting defensive line is going to be out for this game. Eric Armstead out with a foot and knee injury. Javon Hargrave out with the hamstring injury that he suffered uh, last week in the Seahawks game. And I was kind of concerned that it was going to be a much longer injury because hamstring, that might have been strain, a uh, pull, something. But lucky it was just a strain, um, as Kyle Shannon said. So maybe they're just uh, keeping it safe. Hopefully he'll be ready for the big Christmas game against Baltimore. But don't want to overlook things right now. But nonetheless... Um, on the on the other defensive end, a little bit more positive news, I suppose, like corner Traverius Ward. He has that groin injury, and he did practice on the side a little bit. So he is listed as questionable. Um, he might play. He might not play. Um, if he were me, I would personally sit him just to play it safe as well. But who knows? It's, it's his body. It's his choice. Uh, we will see. But there is some positive news in the linebacker death. Dre Greenlaw is expected to play. He did practice on Friday, um, despite being questionable with a hip injury. So that's good news for the 49ers linebacking core. And corner and special teams player Dell Luter Jr. Um, is expected to return after missing last week's game with a hamstring injury. So not all bad news for the 49ers in terms of the defense. The offensive line might be a little messy um, if they're not if they're not active for this game. If Aaron Banks and Spencer Burford um, missed this game with injury. So they're listed as questionable. I hope Aaron Banks um, is able to play in this game. I mean, he did he did practice um, on Wednesday and Friday. 
uh, despite the hamstring injury and being listed as did not practice on Thursday. So we will see. Meanwhile, for the Arizona Cardinals, they were coming off their bye week, uh, but they still had plenty of questionables going into this game. Uh, mostly uh, linebacker Chris Barnes with the rib injury. that he I think he's had that for a little while now, hasn't he? And then receiver Marquise Brown with a foot injury. And then the only person that is confirmed out for this game is cornerback Bobby Price with a hamstring injury. So back of corner Antonio Hamilton Sr. is expected to return for this game. So the backup corner after missing some time with a groin injury. So for both of these teams, uh, the Niners are certainly kind of beat up on the injury front, but I can kind of sense that going into this game, the offense is going to have to definitely carry the load. Brock Purdy and that offense is going to have to pretty much have a repeat of a repeat of a repeat <laughs> of a repeat performance that they've been having for the last four weeks or so during that win streak, uh, especially against the Arizona Cardinals team facing a mobile quarterback that could put up some points if the Niners defense cannot hold them if the reserves cannot get it done. So speaking of which, uh, my keys to victory for both of these teams, starting with my 49ers, the reserves got to do all they can to keep Kyler Murray within the pocket and limit the explosive plays. So with no Javon Hartgrave, no Eric Armstead in the middle to help Nick Boza and Chase Young. So it's going to be uh, Javon Kinlaw and Khalil Davis, Kalia Davis, uh, whatever his name is, sorry, Kalia Davis, and the rest of the deaf to try and make things uh, tough inside, Try to especially protect the run defense uh, of James Conner. So you got to help out uh, Nick Boza and Chase Young. We're definitely going to contain the edge and try to create uh, pressure that way and try to limit Murray in the pocket. So that, that depth of the 49ers defense is going to be tested in this game. So it, it's actually a good time to, considering where Arizona is, but also at the same time, you got to be careful. And then on offense, it's pretty simple. I mean, you got to keep the foot on the gas pedal, especially if you're in the potential of a shootout. So Brock Purdy and the offense need to keep creating explosive plays. You got to keep scoring. I mean, Arizona, I mean, it's not, I'm not saying it's not a bad defense. It's not a terrible defense, but it's also not a great defense at where it is at this point. So you got to keep punching Arizona whenever it scores and whenever it doesn't score. So pretty much you got to keep uh, putting points on the board whenever an opportunity arises. And then for the Arizona Cardinals, um, if you want to have a fighter's chance to put up an upset, especially considering that, well, your home crowd is going to be outgained by the 49ers crowd, and especially considering you're wearing white at home, like that's an interesting decision um, in the desert in December. But nonetheless, uh, you got to use James Conner as much as possible, especially against this Niners run defense. That's not going to have Eric Armstead and Javon Hargrave. So that 49ers uh, middle interior, uh, middle defensive line is going to have some cracks in it. I mean, they did a solid job uh, containing uh, Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet for the second half, but James Conner is kind of a different running back. So you, you want to utilize him as much as possible and help out Kyler Murray uh, bounce out that passing attack. So you want to set up some run plays for James Conner, both inside and out. And then on defense, do what you can to limit Brock Purdy's downfield explosives. You want to force him to simply check it down the uh, check it down the middle, or simply check it down on the on on the left or the right. Try to force him to not create as many big plays as you can. Try to limit him to like what maybe five to ten yard plays. So if Arizona can do that, yeah, maybe there will be a shot to try to take down these Niners and pull off an upset. So we will see what happens. I mean, <laughs> I mean, not gonna try to predict any score here, but uh, the 49ers gotta be gotta be careful here. They cannot uh, sleepwalk on the Arizona Cardinals. They cannot look ahead to the big Christmas game against the Ravens uh, next Monday. And well, if if anything, be like, don't be like Liv Morgan. You gotta stay off the weed and take care of business, man. Just take care of their freaking business and beat the Arizona Cardinals um, and clinch the division already. Just clinch, just take care of the damn business. It's simple as that. So anyway, 
Uh, let me know your thoughts on this game uh, for my 49ers fans out there. And just I'm just kind of a little concerned that with all these injuries, that this has the potential of a shootout, yet also a trap. It's a trap, Maggle. It's a trap. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on this game um, in the desert between the Niners and the Arizona Cardinals in the comments below. And until the next one, keep that lasagna very cold in the fridge with your takes on the world of sports. And until next time, peace out.